And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things. For I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story. Three minus one equals murder. was on the outskirts of Los Angeles. The girl stood in the glare of the oncoming headlights, waving her arms, not knowing for certain if the young man at the wheel could see her through the rain and the 3 a.m. darkness. She wondered if he was going to go on past, and she shouted out to him. Stop! Please stop! Hey, what's the matter? I almost ran over you. Oh, I was afraid you wouldn't stop. I got a flat. Look, if you expect me to change a tire in this rain... No, I'll... of course not. I... Can pick up the car tomorrow. How about a lift, huh? Okay, get in. Oh, thanks. Well, something wrong? No. no nothing's wrong. Oh, I didn't think I'd look that bad. Uh, no, no. You, uh. You look good. You're just a little wet. Uh, we better get going. I, uh, thought that was the idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, where to? It's not far. Uh, turn left down here and then take the road up to the hills. <laughs> What's so funny? Well, it sounds like you're taking me to Lover's Lane. I see you've been there before. Uh, only to look at the view. And did you like it? The view? Mm-hmm. Left me breathless. <laughs> oh, here, here, take my handkerchief. Oh, thanks. Oh, you're wonderful. Oh, sure glad you came along. You been to a party? No, I was just coming home from work. Work in those clothes? I'm a singer, Sylvia Starr. My real name is Sylvia Sanford. Oh, uh, where? Mario's. Well, it's quite a spot. <laughs> now my interview. Name? Yeah, Matt Blake. Matt Blake. Nice. Profession? Airplane mechanic at Glenview Airport. Sounds very exciting. As a matter of fact, it's pretty dull, especially the late shift. Just came off duty. <laughs> Lucky for me. <laughs> hey, if we don't hurry and get you home, you won't be able to sing. Oh. Just around a couple of more curves. Who was it that said, let's get out of these wet clothes into a dry martini? Oh, Robert Pensler. Oh, he knew what he was talking about. Uh, say, wouldn't you like to come in for a drink? Maybe by that time the rain will stop. Well, that's the best idea I've heard all evening. Here, turn in this driveway. Watch it, it's pretty sharp. You mean you live here? Mm-hmm. Big, isn't it? Singers must be doing all right these days. Oh, I'm... I'm not that good. I married money. Oh, you're married. Well, look, I'd better be getting out. Don't be silly. He's out of town. Oh. Well, after all, you've driven me clear up here. The least you deserve is a drink. Okay. you twisted my arm. <laughs> oh, here's a light. Oh, it's good to be inside. Give me a coat. Make yourself at home. Home. I feel more like I was in a hotel. Then straight down the hall here. Wow. This is very cozy. Very cozy. I'm having brandy and soda. What would you like? No, that's good. I'll hold the soda on the side. Are you sure your husband isn't here? 
positive. He won't be home for two days. Well, good for him. Here you are. Ah. Home, sweet home. I'll open the curtain so we can look at the lights. You know, when I'm alone, I like to sit here at night and look at the world down there. Are you uh, alone often? Yes. Dutch, my husband's gone quite a lot. With him, business comes first. Yeah, well, somehow I find that hard to believe. Oh, he's not at all like me. We live in two different worlds. What does he do in his world? Rob banks for a living? <laughs> no, he's got timberlands. He owns half the trees in Oregon. Lady, you are in clover. Am I? Uh, what does that mean? Lots of girls think diamonds are a girl's best friend. Till they have them. Then they find out they want something more. Yeah, you women are all alike. You've got to complicate your lives. You got something against romance? I'm beginning to think more of it every minute. But with me, it, it might get in the way. You see, I, I'm a firm believer in the old school of marrying rich widows. They can't afford to be sentimental. It's either money or love, not both. No. By the way, uh, how's your husband's health? Better than mine. Yeah, lucky fellow. Perfect health, imported brandy, and a beautiful wife. In that order? Not if you were mine. I'd put you right at the top of the list. You and your blonde hair. Here, give me a glass. I wish I could say, let me take you away from all this, but uh, somehow it doesn't fit. No, it doesn't, does it? Uh, you'd better just finish your drink before we change our minds. Yes, Sylvia, you send him away. And you're a little sorry it has to be this way, aren't you? Matt is handsome, with the charm of frankness you like so much. But you know what you're doing. And you wait just long enough before managing a second meeting out at the airport. Hey, Matt. Yeah, Joe. I'm here to see you. See me? Who is it? Standing over there. <whistles> Tell me how you do it sometime. Sylvia. Hello, Matt. I just wanted to thank you for the lift the other night. Oh, any time, baby. I didn't expect to see you here at the airport. See that civilian plane that just took off? Dutch is in it. Another trip. How long has you gone this time? Oh, a couple of days. Look, if I'm interrupting... Hey, hey, hold, oh, hold it, sweetheart. You can't come and go this easy. How's the brandy holding on? Oh, there's plenty left. Oh, that's more like it. How about tonight? After I'm through here. All right, why not? Tonight, Matt. <laughs> Things are going fine, aren't they, Sylvia? And after that, you see Matt again and again. And finally, on one of your husband's many trips out of town, you and Matt are together in your cozy den. And you're sure now is the time to get on with your plan. Now that you're finally in his arms. Oh, baby, baby. Just hold me, Matt. Sylvia, what is it with us? Oh, Matt, don't you know? We're in love, you and me. But it's impossible. It's crazy. That's what love is. Look, darling, use your head. It won't work. It can work. We can make it work. Listen, darling. This is the chance you've been waiting for. You want a rich widow to take care of you. Rich widow? I want the job, Matt. You're going a little too fast for me. Do I have to make it any plainer? We could... We could get rid of Dutch. Wait a minute, Sylvie... You're talking about murder. We could have his money and each other. Oh, Matt, I'm desperate. Say you'll help me, please. Say. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, Sylvia, you missed your calling. You should be an actress. What do you mean? That little speech was very touching. Matt, I don't... Do I look that dumb? If you want to get rid of your husband, you'll have to get another sucker. I'm not going to be the fall guy for any dame. Doesn't my loving you make any difference? You expect me to believe that? I'm almost wondering if you didn't set this up from the beginning. Oh, you're a fool, Matt. I love you. Oh, stop it, Sylvia. When you get right down to it, you're just a woman, and every corner comes equipped with one. Not like me. No. Not like you. But an awful lot safer. Matt! Matt, don't leave I'm me. I'm getting out of here. So long, Sylvia. All right, go on. But somehow, I think you'll be back. <laughs> Go farther. Go farther.
farther. Just mention those two words, go farther, to motorists anywhere around these Pacific Coast states. And what do they think of? Why, Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, of course. Now, it goes without saying, in order to be known as the go-farther gasoline, Signal has to give mighty good mileage. But sometimes a product becomes so celebrated for one feature, people forget it has other advantages, too. I'm referring to the satisfying performance, which naturally goes hand-in-hand with Signal's good mileage. As you've heard me explain before, you get that good signal mileage because today's signal gas helps your engine run so efficiently. And when your engine runs efficiently, naturally you also enjoy quicker starting, peppier pickup, smoother power. That's why signal hopes you'll remember. The best yardstick of a gasoline's performance is its mileage, which also explains why more and more motorists who insist on the tops in driving pleasure are switching to signal The famous gasoline that helps you go farther. Go farther. Go farther. Well, Sylvia. You finally told Matt what's been on your mind so long. The murder of your husband. And you don't give up when Matt storms angrily out, refusing to have any part of it, do you? No. Because you're certain that here in this house is the answer to all of Matt's dreams. You, Sylvia. And the easy money he'll share with you once Dutch is dead. Matt stays away from you for a whole week. And then... Matt! Oh, I knew it was you. I knew it. Why did I come back? Don't you know? I want you to tell me. Because you love me. And I love you. Say it again. And mean it, Sylvia. Close the door. That tells me everything I want to know. What now, Matt? I'll do whatever you want, Sylvia. Anything. But it's got to be quick. But carefully. It takes planning. I've seen your husband at the airport, Sylvia, and I've been noticing things. He's the kind who takes chances, likes his night flying. Everyone knows the chances Dutch takes. Part of his nature. The way he drives his car. Don't you ever pick him up at the airport? No, he leaves his car there. When does he come home next, Sylvia? Friday night. Why? Well, that long stretch of road below here before it hits the hills, it's it's deserted late at night. Now, supposing he goes off the road at high speed, crashes. People would say he took one chance too many. Oh, Matt, it's awful risky. Whatever you do, be careful. I'll see that his car goes off the road. So long, baby. Goodbye, darling. Well, Sylvia, it's going to happen even sooner than you had dared hoped, isn't it? The days ahead seem like years, but you check your impatience, knowing that it's all up to Matt. And whatever happens is on his shoulders. Friday night, you stay within the safety of your house in the hills. But it's not hard to imagine the scene on that lonely stretch of road when the hour comes. Your husband, driving at his usual breakneck speed. Now another car coming up behind, then alongside, crowding Dutch over relentlessly. Dutch's angry shout till his tires hit the shoulder, and then the wild crash as his car careens down the embankment. Hello? Relax, baby. Oh, Matt. Matt, are you all right? I couldn't be better, but I can't say as much for your late husband. Then it worked. You're sure? I said relax, Sylvia. It went just like I said it would. He was doing 70 when he went off the road. Oh, Matt, when will I see you? I better sit tight tonight. When I see you again, it's for keeps. Right, baby? Yes, Matt, yes. For keeps. <laughs> It looks like the house and everything Dutch has is yours now, Sylvia. And when the doorbell rings an hour later, you're sure it's the police coming to tell you of your husband's untimely death. Dutch. So surprised to see your husband, Sylvia? Why, why, no, I... It's almost as though you didn't expect me. 
Or did you? Well, of, of course I did. It, it's just that you... You look so strange. What happened, Dutch? I'm not quite sure. Then something did happen. A car deliberately ran me off the road. I'm wondering why. Oh, darling, how awful. The driver must have been drunk. Maybe. Only he drove away safely enough. I'm not a bad driver myself, Sylvia, or I'd have turned over for sure. Oh, thank heavens you're all right, honey. Look, why don't I get you a drink and, and then you can get some rest? Not now. Come into the den, Sylvia. I want to talk with you. Tonight? Why? I've been thinking about you these last few weeks, Sylvia. And uh, what happened in the past hour. Surely you're not accusing me of... Is there any reason why I should... No, of course not. Oh, Dutch. Dutch, you're not... Sit down, Sylvia. Now listen to me. Very well. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. You're still my wife. I've made up my mind about a lot of things. To begin with, you're giving up your crazy idea of being a singer again. I see. In spite of what you think, other people like my voice. They pay to hear me. They pay money to see you wiggle in those dresses you wear. You haven't changed, Sylvia. You're still the same girl I took out of the carnival five years ago, the snake dancer. Come one, come all, only a dime. Can't you ever forget you found me in a carnival? I can't forget, Sylvia, because you won't let me. (gasps) Why did you marry me? I don't think you ever loved me. You're wrong, Sylvia. I did love you. And besides, you're beautiful. And I like beautiful things. You know that. Yes, I still take pride in having you here, Sylvia. It soothes a man's ego to have a beautiful young wife. But you never let me do anything I like. You're always criticizing, always complaining. Perhaps it's because I see something in you that should be developed, some innate sense of refinement. Oh, really? You're supposed to marry people for love, not not to develop them. I'm touched deeply, my dear. This is the first time I knew you ever married me for love. Oh, what makes you this way? Don't you have any feelings? Stop it, Sylvia. No, I'm going to say this once more, and this time I want it to sink in. I'm not a man who can live alone with disappointment nor uncertainty about my wife. If you want to go on accepting the comforts I give you, enjoy my money, inherit it. If anything happens to me, you're going to have to live the way I want you to. It's that or else. Is that what you mean, Dutch? As of this moment, everything is changing. I intend for us to go abroad this winter. And I expect you to conduct yourself like a lady. Is that clear? Is it? Yes. Perfectly clear. Good. And in the meantime, Sylvia, just to remind you, a lady always remains loyal to her husband. More days go by, Sylvia. But now the Dutch has delivered his ultimatum, you're more than ever determined to do away with him once and for all. But as long as Dutch is home, You don't dare see Matt, because you're not quite sure how much Dutch might know, are you? But at last you call Matt from the beach house, and he rushes to meet you. Matt, he's been watching me like a hawk. Baby, is it safe here? Yes, he went to Bakersfield, but just for today. Besides, he hardly ever comes to the beach house. Oh, darling, I can't live with him any longer. I know, baby, it's got to be us, straight down the line. Soon, it's got to be soon. Every day I'm away from the ice. But you were right. It's got to be planned. The next time, we've got to be sure. It shouldn't be so difficult, should it, Matt? No, no, it, it's still the, the getting away with it. We could still make it look like an accident. He, he could fall in the pool, or his gun could go off while he no, was cleaning no, no, it. No, 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 that's, that's no good. At least, no better than the last try. Oh. Baby, uh, tell me some more about Dutch. Well, what? What do you want to know? Uh, everything. A- anything you know. Just talk. Well, I... I guess Dutch is what you'd call a proud man. He... He's always telling how he started with nothing and worked his way up. How he had to fight for everything. You sit there, Sylvia, talking, as the ice in your drink melts down to water and the sunlight filling the room gradually turns to shadows. You talk on, oblivious to everything else, waiting for the perfect plan. That feels he was kicked around. Yet that's why he's never trusted anyone. That's why I learned to fly his own plane, so he wouldn't have to depend Sylvia, on anyone. Sylvia, his own plane, why didn't we think of that? Oh, Matt, would it be possible? At the Glenview Airport, where I'm a mechanic, why not? You say he'll be back tonight, Sylvia? Late, yes. All right. 
All right, I'd better not do anything to draw suspicion. You see, uh, you go out to Glenview and be there at the airport waiting for him when he comes in. Find out exactly where he keeps the plane, uh, who his mechanic is, and when he gets the plane ready for the next flight. Uh, you understand? Yes. You mean something could happen to his plane? I can fix it. Leave that to me. But what if somebody suspects? Dutch is a good flyer, Matt. He knows planes. Not like I do. I see. A crash at the airport wouldn't be so good. Let him take off. That's it. He gets in the air. Things will be going fine till something snaps. You're sure it's possible? I tell you, I know a way, Sylvia. And once Dutch crashes and the plane burns, no investigation in the world will turn up anything. At 11 o'clock that night, Sylvia, you're standing inside the terminal gate waiting for Dutch. You watch the planes land and take off, almost forgetting to breathe. They're the symbol of your freedom now, and then suddenly... Sylvia! Oh, Dutch! I thought I saw you standing at the gate, but I couldn't believe my eyes. Why, I thought you weren't interested in planes. Well, you're, you're looking at a new woman, honey. I decided that since you spend so much time in the air, I I want to know everything about it. Well, come on over with me and I'll show you the plane then. Oh, I'm glad you came on, dear. Now, before long, you'll be as crazy about flying as I am. You're probably right, Dutch. Uh, when are you taking your next flight? Huh? Oh, next Wednesday. Oh. Well, do I detect a note of sadness? Well, I was just thinking how long away that was. I mean, how long you'll be away. Sylvia, uh... I've been thinking ever since I got back from my last trip and we quarreled. I've, I've been thinking... Oh, please, let's don't start in again, Doctor. No, let me finish. I, I've been blaming you for all our difficulties, and I've been very harsh, but it's been my fault, too. Maybe more than yours. After all, you're young, full of life, and... It's not much fun being tied to a man who's away so much. Dutch, you don't hear me complaining? No, w- wait, Sylvia. I, I've i tried to change you and mold you to my pattern of thinking. That that was stupid. You you were right. You can't marry people in hopes of changing them. You marry them because you love them. Well, uh, what I'm trying to say, and I, I'm afraid I'm saying it very badly, is I, I, I do love you, Sylvia. Can't we make a new start? A new start? I'm going to give up all the business trips unless we can go together like the trip abroad I've planned. I'm going to stay home with you and spend all of my time making you happy. That would make you happy, wouldn't it? Why, yes. And on this next trip, I'm going to get everything in order, wind up the loose ends, and then I promise you, dear, it'll be the last trip I'll take. Your last trip? Yes, Sylvia. And we'll make it an occasion you'll never forget. That night after dinner, you make an excuse to go out, phone Matt. And later, you meet him at an all-night market and start setting the plans for next Wednesday. Lay the groundwork for murder. And then comes the hardest part of all, Sylvia. More waiting. There are five days left. Five days of staring at the clock. Five days of looking at the calendar. And Dutch never leaves you alone. He's very gay and attentive, trying hard to make you smile. You look up into his face and smile back at him when he kisses you. Every nerve in your body is twisted, but you smile back at him. Because you know you won't have to smile at him much longer. Of course, you don't go with Dutch to the airport Wednesday morning. When he leaves, you kiss him at the door and wave a fond goodbye. You know that Matt is waiting halfway down the hill, his work done. Waiting only long enough to see Dutch drive away. It's only a few minutes until Matt arrives and you're in each other's arms. Oh, you're sure, Matt? You're sure he'll crash? I'm positive. He won't be in the air more than a few minutes before he loses control. Oh, what if he notices something wrong before he takes off? Oh, look, baby, I've taken enough planes apart and put them back together to know what I'm doing. He'll get off the ground, but not too much further. Our worries are over, Sylvia. Oh, darling. Matt, darling. Oh, don't cry, baby. We'll have everything now. We can really start to live. You hear people say, you don't get anything for nothing these days. Well, if I may borrow a phrase from Gershwin, it ain't necessarily so. 
At least you certainly get a lot of extras without paying extra for them when you buy Lee tires. For instance, like most modern tire makers, Lee uses cold rubber. But Lee gives its cold rubber extra toughness by adding patented high abrasive Phil Black O. All tires have to have some kind of carcass. But Lee gives its carcass extra reinforcement against blowouts and damage with double-life rayon cord. And while numerous tires are guaranteed, Lee Super Deluxe Passenger Tires give you extra protection with a double guarantee. Guaranteed 15 months against all road hazards, guaranteed for life against defective materials and workmanship. Yet you pay nothing extra for all these extras in Lee Tires. In fact, right now, signal stations and Lee tire dealers are even giving generous trade-in allowances for old tires. So any way you look at it, for value, for mileage, for safety, your best tire buy is a nationally advertised Lee tire, proudly featured and guaranteed by more than 19,000 dealers throughout America, including all signal service stations. <laughs> The blast of the crashing plane was heard all over the valley, sending residents rushing from their homes to see the flames and smoke of the wreckage. Firefighters quickly blocked the area, but the newsmen got through, got the story, and called their papers. City desk. Hello, Scotty. This is Clary. Here's the story on that plane crash. Uh, don't you stand for the lumber king? That's the one. What about his host? Uh, nothing left of it. Looks like an atom bomb hit it. According to neighbors, he flew low and buzzed it a couple of times, apparently signaling goodbye to his wife. On the last dive, he couldn't pull out of it, piled right into his own house. Uh, how did they identify Sanford? Dutch Sanford wasn't killed. The crash threw him free of the plane, and they pulled him out of some bushes. He'll be as good as new in a few weeks. Anybody in the house? They recovered two bodies, Dutch's wife, Sylvia, and some guy who was with her. We don't know who he was. Chances are we never will. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you. The USO, which serves as a home away from home for our boys in uniform, is one of the many worthy services you'll be helping this year when you contribute to the current community chest campaign. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Doris Singleton, Hi Averback, Bill Conrad, and Bob Bruce. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Jolene Hinman, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on the Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler entitled Love Match in which a terrible mistrust between a pair of conspirators leads to grimly exciting mystery and murder. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.